I sort of decided that it was music that really sort of took me more than anything. It was things like there was a show that Ronnie Size used to do and DJ Crust on Galaxy FM, and it was the only station that you could get from this area. You know, you didn't have there wasn't a National Jungle show, so it was, this was like the 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 show that I would always tape every week religiously. It's like the first time you heard Jungle, and I remember being around the schoolyard listening to this constantly, and it would be like the soundtrack to your week. You know, and that's where I really immersed myself in that sound and. Coming back here sort of reminds me of that time, and you know, making this album has been like a sort of two-year journey, and it's been really good to sort of draw on these old inspirations from from this time. crazy to think I've been in a hospital for almost 13 years now it was like back in 2000 I remember signing with them and I just sent a CD through the post and came down and they said oh we want you to do an album for us which was like quite a unique thing at that time because people weren't doing so many drum and bass albums and it was like really exciting time and then it kind of went from being really high to really low because I had this like terrible bout of writer's block for about five years and it was just like so frustrating to see all the hard work that you put in just kind of go nowhere and every time you sit down to try and make a tune nothing would happen and they have to move on if you're not producing the goods and it felt like a little bit like they'd lost faith in me and yeah it took a while to get back on track with that. I was doing a part-time job teaching music technology which was which was cool at the time you know but it was like it's great to sort of teach people that were fresh to music and really enthusiastic and probably had that enthusiasm that I didn't have. In a way they inspired me because I knew deep down in the back of my mind that I was sort of destined to do more this than is this. Hospital podcast. This is the bad boy is back again. It's Danny Bird in the house. Make some noise everybody. Yay! I remember Tony saying to me, right, we want you to do an album. Like he he kind of got tough for me. I remember one time he kind of pulled me in for a meeting and I think this was like the last chance I had and he said if you don't come up with about 10 tunes in in four weeks we're going to drop you from the label and that was like a big wake-up call for me I think went home that day and did like two ideas and had about eight sketches in a week that all became sort of part of my first album so it was like a real turning round kind of point <laughs> It's kind of mad because I've spent so much time in that office. They've got a studio there that I often mix stuff down. And I remember like on my last couple of albums, almost living there for like a good month straight. So you get really get to know the staff and it's like an extended family and all their hard work is quite inspiring when you go down there and it rubs off on you to sort of produce and kind of work harder a lot more in the studio.
<laughs> this album started with a sort of I wouldn't say disillusionment but you know I'd done two albums really closely together all mainly drum and bass and it kind of started off you know maybe me being a little bit bored of the 174 BPM template and starting off with this kind of itch that I wanted to scrap this UK garage kind of feeling that I wanted to explore more Crying in the streets That's it, that's it, keep doing that when I had my writer's block, one thing that I did do was I was working with a guy called Kevin Real Deal from uh, Bristol, and this was like when Garage was at his peak, and we made quite a few Garage tunes, and that was an exciting thing for me because it's one of my other musical loves. And yeah, like this album started off just being free and doing, you know, tracks you want to do rather than just thinking this is for an album, you know, just slowing down the tempo and kind of using some bumpy kind of garage sounds and adding swing to them and all the stuff I used to like do 10 years ago with Kevin is sort of all come back round really. I'd say the difference between this album and the last two is I've kind of really upped the game with the vocalists I've been working with. Using people like Cerisi, I mean I was working on this track that had this kind of old speed garage sound and Cerisi came to mind because he's got such a unique like sense of rhythm and his timing's like second to none. Well, you know about this? With Danny, I only work with a few DJs anyway, you know, and the one trait, the one thing with them is it's very diverse. Um, Danny's sets, especially because you play predominantly to a drum and bass crowd, and you can see on their faces they don't expect somebody to drop some trap or something in the set and then he'll do that he's not afraid to do that you know what i mean and he'll drop it and people and because of the crowds nowadays it's not like back in the day where it's like they're only used to one form of music they actually know these they come for a drum and bass like that's fine but they know some of the other tunes as well you know so when you do that um you can tell that they appreciate it because they haven't heard anything other than drum and bass all night you know the thing with daddy bird she find everything like uh, 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 uh. Yo! So you're gonna do like stop! Listen, what's good? What's kicking? Lose control. I was working with this on this track with Jaguar Skills. It's kind of this real party kind of hip hop style intro, and we needed an MC on it. And no, none of the stuff we were doing was working. It just happened that Rhymes just sent me these vocals, and it just happened that this vocal fitted over the Jaguar Skills tune perfectly. Stop! Listen, what's good? What's kicking? Lose control? Jump your inhibitions? Everybody in the place start was pitting. Stop! Listen, what's good? What's kicking? Lose control, drop your inhibitions. Everybody in the place, start what's pitting. Stop! <laughs> Alright, so you've got a lead, you've got a main line, yeah. then you've got Everybody that double left and right, and then you've got a last bit. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, three left. Right. Don't make your head bang! Don't make your head pop! I wanna see you scared! I wanna see you move! Yeah, that's how we kind of like hooked up and I think that's why I respect someone like Rhymes has got a real um, hunger for it and you know, sometimes you want to work with vocalists and they, you know, they tell you, oh yeah, I can do it next week and then they, 
you know they cancel on the day and say oh sorry we'll do it next year I, I can't work vocalists like that you know it's too long someone like Ryan's he'd be available at 3am to do a session you know it's uh, that's how music gets done previously my other albums you know I write all the stuff in my home studio but when it comes to mixing and mastering and finishing off the tune I always have to do it somewhere else because the acoustics aren't great in my home studio so I would always finish stuff off in the hospital studio in London but quite long to go down there and I discovered this this studio that's just up the road from me and it's like part of a nightclub complex as well it has like a massive SSL mixing board that other studios don't don't kind of have these days. It's like a classic mixing desk and you've got these massive main monitor speakers that are in the wall that kind of give you the feeling like you're playing your track in a club. You can mix something down there and then play it out the same night. And yeah, like Moles, the studio is such an important part of this. That's that's why we've chosen to do the album launch at Moles, you know, then the nightclub downstairs, sort of out of respect for how important this has been part of the puzzle of this album. I mean, I've been on the road for constantly for about the last six or seven years. And yeah, you know, it, it's a cliche thing for a DJ to say it's hard. You know, like, you know, I remember washing up dishes, that was more harder than this, but it does take a toll on, like, it's sometimes, you know, as much as I love the gigs and it's, you know, an amazing kind of thing to do, it's sometimes you just want to get home as well. I took six months off from DJing a couple of years ago and, it was kind of a real real weird time and I thought I needed it at the time and I thought it would benefit my production and I'd make more tunes but actually it's like playing gigs is the heart and soul of the music it's your interaction you know when when you're sat in the studio on your own you're there for hours and hours on end just with your own company and playing it playing your tunes out is that feedback plays a really important part of the music industry you know it's things like radio one and one extra very important in the uk for breaking new talent and breaking new tunes and you know it doesn't matter where you are in your career if you hear one of your tracks being played on a radio and when you're in the car you're guaranteed to turn it up it's anything but my dreams tonight uh, we've got another guest he goes by the name of daddy Bird. Oh my god! Daddy Bird. <coughs> Good evening, Christopher. Good evening. I, Good morning. I sort of applaud One Extra for sticking with drum and bass. You know, last year it was dubstep, and this year it's deep house, and a few years ago it was electro, but you know, drum and bass has always stayed strong, if not strong, consistent. It's, I think it's weathered all the storms of people saying, is it going to die out? You know, drum and bass is 
quite a mature form of dance music now as other new genres, you know, t only time will tell. Well, I've known Dan and Phil Brooks for about six years now. I randomly met them at a night in Bath. We just decided, oh, let's do a tune together. And then on that Sunday, we were in the studio in London making a track together. And it was like meeting some long lost musical soulmates in a way, you know? It was like the music they make is the closest to the vibe that I'm doing. And we have like very similar kind of musical tastes. Me, that is like. Liquid is just yeah. a certain vibe at 174. So that's what it is to me. Yeah, like Brooks, I'd say are like some of my best friends in the music industry. I mean, Brooks and me, we share such a sort of common musical vision that I think that shows in the music. You know, I can spend a week at Dan's house and we won't get, get on each other's nerves. And I generally kind of like put on two stone while I'm down there because we end up eating so many bad foods and trying to debate what, what is the best jerk chicken in London. I found the best jerk. Down the road. Is yeah. it the best jerk you've ever had in your life? No, but it's not the best jerk I've had in, in, in the UK. In London, serious. Yeah, smoky jerky, I'll do right. Yeah, you, smoky jerky's back, isn't it? It's back. You never tried any of my no. chicken? <laughs> no. No, no. The jerk woman. The jerk. Oh, Jade. Jade. Jade's, Jade's yeah, jerk. Jade's food yeah, is yeah. Oh, no. Man. Shout out to Jade. I like <laughs> 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 Hospitality Brixton is like, it's probably the biggest drum and bass night in the country. It's kind of mad to see it on that scale with like 5,000 people because I remember the days when the first hospitality is at Herbal, you know, you'd play to 300 people and that, that would feel great. And just to see it scaled up on this size is just like an amazing thing. Believe in yourself, put your pride up on yourself, put your hands up, put your, put your hands up.
Moles Club. You never ever let us down. Can you just like, can you just make some noise for yourselves generally right now? I'm going to play my last tune, and this is a new tune, I've only just finished it. Well, it's not really finished, but do you want to hear it anyway? Yeah. No one ever said it before, beating the drum with every breath. Now, Danny Byrne is going to rip it up for 90 minutes strong. Hey, yo, Danny Byrne, let's do this. Can you hear the echoes up? Through the sky like a bus or fly like no one else. Sing to know your way. Save yourself, we are one tonight. So fly like no one else. So sing to know we are well. Move to save yourself. We are one tonight. We've done two album parties before in Bath. We always do that as like a special thing to celebrate the album because Bath's obviously my hometown. It's like a always a special gig. And this time we wanted to do it and kind of involve all the people that have kind of been involved in this project. So it was kind of really good to see so many people down. It's sort of like a bit of a mixture of between a sort of birthday party and a rave, basically. You know, I had my whole family down, my dad there, my uncle there. Even High Contrast came down just to check out the night, you know, and to support and, and Brooks Brothers as well and Dynamite and it was just like such a wicked vibe. Because he was getting successful quite early on he started to lean on himself too much and put too much pressure on himself. And he started to get very, very worried and paranoid that he wouldn't be able to follow up what he'd done with something better. So he kind of stopped. And we kept, we kept ringing him up saying, are you going to send him any more music? And he was like, oh, I just can't do this, I can't do that. And then, and then it, but yeah, about eight years after we signed him, he sent, through, out of the blue, a CD came through the post of the bare bones of what would become his first album. This album's like a really personal kind of journey for me. It's like a real return to my garage and R&B roots. And it's been great to work with people like Xavier, who's a classic garage vocalist and used to feature on old Tough Jam records that I used to listen to so much when I was younger. And vocalists like Miss Brat, New Talent and Tanya Lacey. It's a, a real kind of personal album. And I hope people um, you know, enjoy it as much as I did making it. <laughs> 